How's it going? So, let's make ourselves a set of Wolverine claws. Now, my thought with this is to use Core 10. It's a very tough, rugged material, often used in industrial applications like digger buckets, etc. Now, I also can't get hold of any 1045 or high carbon steel, so that's the other reason we're going to use Core 10. My thought with this is that we have a perfect opportunity to learn about carbonization. So, we're going to make ourselves a set of Wolverine claws. We're going to learn about carbonization and hopefully end up with a set of very functional and ergonomic Wolverine claws. Right, let's jump over to the computer and start cutting this bad boy right up. Right, so we've got all the parts cut out now. We've got two up here that are spares. I've just gone for a generic fit. Now, this is so I can come in with a grinder and shape them. This is because we're doing a low production run. So if I was doing a large production, I would custom fit each one to each knuckle, and then we would cut them out. But because we're only doing six, it is much, much quicker just to come in with a grinder and shape each one to fit. Right, what we're doing here is we're just taking off this mill scale. It's actually a very, very hard layer, so we're just going to strip that back. We'll get a nice uniform look, uh, and then we can start looking at putting a little bevel on here, as well as squaring the edges up. Right, let's uh, do this. Right, so we've just finished squaring this up with the belt sander. Now what we want to do is add in our bevel. Now this is only going to be a rough bevel. We're not actually looking for a sharp edge yet. We are just looking for getting the main shape. We're going to use the grinder with a flap disc. This is 120 grit, so it's not too rough. We only want to be pulling. If you start pushing with this, you're going to end up getting gouges. But if we pull, we're going to end up with a much smoother finish. We also need a mark on both sides, a certain distance, and that's where the bevel is going to taper back off. For this, we want to make sure that we still have enough room for the grinder, so we can still get in on both sides, because obviously we we'll have to come in that side as well. So we just need to keep that in mind while we think about that. Obviously, we want uniformity between everything. Right, let's uh, measure it up. Right, what we're going to do here is join all the claws together just onto one bar. This is just going to make it so much easier to process. We able to dip them into the forge all together rather than trying to dip each one in and fishing through with the pliers. So this is just going to make it much easier to handle. Right, let's just tack these up and uh, I guess we're starting to harden these bad boys. Woo! Right, we need to make ourselves a case hardening powder. Now the main ingredient is a high carbon content material and what we're going to use is barbecue charcoal. Now we'll break this up into a fine powder, put it through a blender then through the sieve. The finer the powder, the more surface contact we'll get and so we'll get better results. Now I can recommend against raiding your kitchen and getting these essential items because um, there will be consequences. Hoping no one has noticed, I shall continue. The blender has given up. After about 30 minutes of uh, use, it uh, seems to have packed a wee sand. Right, so we've got our powderized charcoal here. Now, to make this into a case hardening powder, we need to add an accelerator, and that is sodium carbonate, which is soap crystals. So it's quite easy to get hold of. It's about 1% to the ratio, so this is 3 kilos, so we should add probably 3 grams of sodium carbonate. I don't have pure sodium carbonate, so I'm just going to do you know, just a rough amount, just to sprinkle in. Right, I know I look filthy, but I want to give you a quick breakdown of what we're actually doing. So we're case hardening, which is a process of hardening the exterior layers of the steel whilst leaving the internals tough and malleable. Now, the process we're doing is heating the steel up to an unstable temperature, dipping it in the charcoal and repeating about five or six times. On an atomic level, we're hopefully adding carbon atoms to the metal lattice. Now this will leave us with carbon atoms and the metal. Now these are still just a crystalline structure that's not actually homogenous. Now, we heat it up again and then quench it and by quenching it we're cooling it down so quickly that it can't reform that crystalline structure and we'll be left with that extremely hard exterior layer. Now by quenching it like that we'll be left with internal stresses so we'll have to temper it which is heating it up and then cooling it down slowly and this will let it relieve those internal stresses a little bit and so we won't be left with such an unstable brittle material. 
Right, I hope that makes sense. I definitely think it's worth reading up on this. It is an amazing process. Um, I'll leave some links to some interesting articles in the description. Right, let's uh, heat these up and start uh, giving this a wee go. Right, so we've got the parts on the bench here. These three are cut off and straightened before we quench, just while they're still soft. Now, talking about the actual case hardening of everything, unfortunately, they haven't actually case hardened. The file still wants to take a nice little bite out of them, just the same as the control. So unfortunately, it hasn't actually worked. Now, I know this process does work with what I've got, because I have done a bunch of testing with uh, mild steel prior to this, just to figure out our processes, and it does work. So. The reason I don't think these worked is because the actual material we've chosen, which is Core 10. Now it's a bit unfortunate we haven't been able to make adamantium here, but we're still left with extremely tough blades because this is Core 10, so we've still got a really tough and durable material to make our Wolverine claws out of. It's just a bit unfortunate they haven't case hardened. Right, so we've got the parts cleaned up. We just did what we did at the beginning with the belt sander and the flap disc, except we used a finer grit and took more time. Now that we've got all the parts cleaned up, we now need to start looking at the pan piece. We need to cut ourselves a bit of bar that's the size of the palm. Once it's in the palm, then we'll take measurements of each knuckle placement. With that, then we can mark it out and we can start tacking everything together. Very, very loosely tacked. This is purely to get placement as well as the nice spread and looks. Once we've got that, then we can start looking at welding this up. Right, let's uh, get ourselves a bit of bar, I guess. Right, so it's all tacked up the first one, and wow, it fits so well. I'm so, so happy with that. That's fantastic. So, one claw done. Right, one of the last things that we actually have to do is add something to the back of the handle. Now if we don't do anything, we've pretty much just got a pivot point in our hand, and so the rotation of this will just come back and swing to the back of our hand and probably break it. So we need to add something on the back that gives us something to actually hold on to, as well as to bite into the meaty part of our palm. Now this will hopefully turn it from a pivot point to something you can actually grip onto. Right, so we finished the claws off, now we've got ourselves some rock melons that we need to test them on. Now unfortunately I've got nothing to put this on while testing, so what we need to do is grab ourselves the UTV, drive up to the forest, cut ourselves a big log so we can start putting the rock melons and possibly a pineapple on top of for testing. Right, on with it. <laughs> Right, we're just going to make ourselves a set of dog tags to be a little bit more movie accurate. Uh, I guess there's a small difference between me and Hugh Jackman, but uh, I find it difficult to see sometimes. Test one, rock melon.
Right, so the Wolverine claws worked fantastically. Talking about the design, I would custom fit each claw to my hand. I would go through CAD and do it all that way, rather than trying to do a generic size and then cutting each one to fit. It took me a very long time just to get these to fit into my hand and not cause a whole amount of pain. Using them, this little bar at the bottom does make a huge difference to reduce the leverage forces, but you're still having a 30 centimeter long pivot point. This is just, you know, it's quite a lot to try and resist with your palm, so they will swing back into the back of your hand and hurt so bad. Now, this palm piece does let you jab with it, which means that we can jab it into the bits of wood, and that did work quite fine, it didn't hurt too bad, but overall this is a very ineffective tool. But, these were actually designed for my brother, so they are just going to be hanging on the wall to look pretty. I just thought it would be nice to make them like adamantium, I guess. Right, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll uh, catch you next time.